Moin! And welcome to the links! Since we had quite a lot of BGD videos these days, I thought it would be nice to make another fashion doll custom. For example, one to continue the fantasy creature series that I started with Nagar, the mermaid. Last Halloween! One year ago! <laughs> Why does time fly so fast this year? <clears throat> well, I decided to give the Asian dragon design another try. I wasn't satisfied with my last attempt and wanted to redo it ever since. Sadly, I went into a little, let's say, bad phase with my creativity lately, so I now decided to make it a female doll to stay just a tad more in my comfort zone. And what helps best to escape a sad artist episode? New art supplies! <laughs> Lucky me, I just have the nicest and best contact to my favorite art company Atiza, who wanted to support me instantly. So they sent me new materials to try out, that I will show you a little later in this video. But you've waited for such a long time now, so let's finally start with the doll, right? As a base I chose this Gina Fire Long Monster High doll, since she already is supposed to be an Asian dragon. Even though I do wonder why her color scheme is gold and green instead of gold and red. As far as I know, gold and red were the colors of the Chinese emperors, because they meant luck and good fortune. So I wanted to make an Asian dragon with these colors. To prepare the doll for customization, I first cut off all the factory hair as close to the scalp as possible. After that, I removed the head from the body by heating the plastic with a hairdryer to make it more soft and squishy. Since I always shrink the Monster High doll heads with pure acetone, I always need to remove all the factory hair, paint and most importantly the glue inside the head. To do so, I scratched with a screwdriver inside it and tried to grab all of the sticky chunks with my tweezers. It's always a pretty messy work, especially when there are pieces that won't go out of the neck hole, but I refused to cut the head open because of the shrinking later. With enough patience, it's all doable. And when the head is all cleaned up and pretty, we can put it in pure acetone for two hours to let it soak. Drying after that takes a little longer and is the part where the head gets actually smaller, by the acetone evaporating. To cut out the holes for future eyes, I first sketched them onto the plastic and started cutting with my X-Acto knife. She had pretty big factory molds for her previous eyes and I hoped that I could work around that since I did not want her to have such giant eyes. Next were her legs. I of course wanted to give her some dragon legs, and who else could be a better reference for that than Delightful? She recently finished a whole series about dragon dolls and showed how she tackled the construction of beautiful dragon legs. So I wanted to give it a try too and started by cutting off her original feet. Next step was to cut above her knee to bend her upper thighs a little. My plan was to keep the plastic connected a little and just insert a wire swirl and hot glue to fill the gap. A method that worked really great with an Enchantments doll I recently customized for my Patreon account, but not so great for this project. Either way, it worked out after a while and since I already had wire and hot glue nearby, I continued with some base constructions for the horns at her head. I learned that it works best for me to twist the end of the wire that goes inside the head and secure that with hot glue. Like that, the plastic gives the epoxy a more stable base to hold on to. But before adding the clay, I wanted to reattach head and body and destroy the neck. <laughs> Luckily, only the covering plastic cracked and not the mechanism itself, so I was able to repair that with epoxy glue. I let that dry overnight to get really sure and placed the head back another time, but without cracks. <laughs> Other than western dragons, Asian dragons are always pictured with antlers instead of classic horns, so I wanted to adapt that too. Moreover, they never have wings, because they were mostly seen as river gods. As time went by, they were also combined with other elements like fire, but always stayed wingless. But back to the sculpting, I first created a base layer around the wire construction and pinched some small wire pieces inside for the second layer after everything dried. Moreover, I decided to give her face a little more character by adding some epoxy on her cheekbones. That looks pretty stupid by now, since I wasn't completely sure what I wanted at this point. 
I actually was thinking a little of the movie Maleficent with Angelina Jolie, since she had these pointy cheekbones too, but yes, it wasn't looking so great. <laughs> I ignored that for a while and finished sculpting the horns first, so I had more time thinking. When everything was dry, I started sanding away all the imperfections. Especially the cheekbone thingies. <laughs> but I did not want to give up on them completely, so I tried to make them smaller and pointier, until they turned into more horns somehow. <laughs> now that we neglected the legs a lot, it was time to give them a little more attention. Like I said, I wanted to use the same method as the Lightful, but I wasn't feeling too good with that decision, to be honest. Instead, I printed some dragon legs that I found on Thingiverse with my resin printer. They belong to a whole dragon sculpture, but I just used the leg files and resized them for my needs. Still a huge thank you to the artist. I'll leave the link in the description and right here for you to check it out. They were still not perfect fit, but a wonderful base to work with for me. But before that, her already prepared legs had to go away, so I took my hot glue gun and tried to reheat the plastic to be able to remove it. After that I thought I could already glue the new legs onto the doll, but I realized it would be better to work with them first. Lots of sanding later, I had a better result that I could attach to the doll. Still far from perfect, but way better already. Again, some hot glue for a good first hold and to fill the gaps. To hide the fact that they look more like boots than legs, it was time to use some epoxy. First for a better transition and second for a better hold, since epoxy dries pretty strong. After drying, I sanded down the imperfections and a lot more of the bulkiness, but they were still looking pretty strange and not at all like her actual legs. So I added more clay on her upper thighs. Again, better, but not great. We're slowly getting there. After drying again, I thought I should work a little more on her hips for a better transition. But when working on her torso now, I had to think of her tail too. This one is the test print from my video about Sky, the ball jointed doll I customized in the collab with Logan Dolls, Kozumolski Dolls and Moonlight Jewel. It turned out way too small back then, but for this project, perfectly fine. I decided to attach the first segment of the tail directly to the body and insert a wire so the elastic can be added later. But first I sanded down all the spikes on the tail since Asian dragons usually have fur on their tails instead of spikes. After that she got more epoxy treatment around her hips and on her back, where I inserted the first tail piece. While that dried I had time to work more on the rest of her tail by fixing the pieces with tape to a cardboard to be able to spray paint them all. After the epoxy dried, I of course sanded everything again and even tried to bring out her belly scales. Now I wanted to try this Mr. Surface set to create an even smoother transition from original doll to other modifications. The result looked like this and needed some more sanding and coating. You see, doll customizing is like 90% sanding, I guess? <laughs> But I really liked how you could already see how she would look like when she's done. When I was satisfied with the sanding, I sprayed her with a plastic primer and gold paint. I would not use this paint ever again, since it got me some problems, to be honest. Like reacting strangely at some points and got sticky, for example on her hands. Also, the doll fell over while drying and that left some ugly damages that I tried to fix by sanding again. <laughs> Another layer of paint and she looked fine again. To secure the paint especially on her joints, I used strong glue. I saw some other doll artists use this method and tried that on my latest Patreon exclusive doll with great success, so I wanted to do that again of course. But well, the glue reacted with that stupid paint and started looking really strange. It's not that bad, but again, a reason why I never want to use that gold paint again. I sprayed the whole doll with Mr. Super Clear Sealant and started blushing with red. The more the gold dried, the dirtier it looked, which was another downgrader for this paint. <laughs> but I tried to make the best out of it by adding lots of red to the gold. My plan was, now that I couldn't remove the gold anymore, to cover it up with lots of red and add some golden accents later with another gold paint. 
It took me quite a few layers to build up the colors on that gold paint. Also adding some orange, yellow, bright reds, you know, all the fiery colors. With my gouache colors I gave her a strong black eyeliner that created a pretty contrast to the other colors. So I spontaneously decided to add more black to her design. For example to her scales, to her lips, to her nails and to her feet. As a finishing touch I wanted to paint some golden scales on top of the red blushing. I saw other doll artists using mesh fabric to paint scales and I couldn't resist trying that too. I messed it up a bit, but I love the result. That adds so so much more to the whole design, I kinda wanna do that all the time now. If you wonder why she has no eyebrows or lashes, that's on purpose. Even though I couldn't resist giving her upper lashes for a more glamorous look. She gave me an unusual hard job gluing them in the eye holes, but with lots of patience I managed to do it. After the lashes always come the eyes. I prepared this pair off camera and inserted them with lots of putty. Sometimes it's easy to place the eyes inside the head, but she really gave me a hard time. Nevertheless, I did it and could glue her head cap back on. Like I already said, I did not paint eyebrows on her face because I thought it would look better to give her eyebrow-like scales. For that I used these half beads and glued them on her face. To attach her tail, my plan was to wrap an elastic band and a wire around the wire inside her tail piece. Good plan, but hard to fulfill since the hole was so small. Even with the looped wire, it was nearly impossible to get the elastic around the wire. After probably an hour or so, I had luck and was now able to thread the tail pieces one by one. The wire inside was supposed to give it more stable movement later. At the end, I used a golden bead and made a knot around it. We will hide that a little later. To do her hair, I wanted to try a new method that I discovered at the Instagram profile Hikihikiksu quite a while ago, where you pull out the fibers instead of brushing. All I can say is, the result is amazing and I'll never go back to the brushing method. <laughs> For our dragon lady I mixed these three colors together to get a unique hair color and it turned out so beautiful. If you're interested in the process check out Hikihikiksu who made a video about it or wait for me to get used to it. I already talked about it in my last Patreon exclusive video but I'm super obsessed with this yarn hair quality. But to use it as hair I of course needed it as wefts so I made some and glued them around the head. I still have a whole lot to learn when it comes to wefts and wigs and all that, but I think I'm already on a good way. They do look way better nowadays than my first attempts. To create a beautiful part line, I glued one weft the wrong way on and flipped it over when the glue was dry completely. To set it in place, I heated a knife and pressed it down. Sadly, I pressed too long so the glue reactivated and, well, you see yourself. Lesson learned. Maybe the glue wasn't dry enough or it was the heat, I don't know. But I will be more careful in the future. To close the part line I took another weft and glued it next to the previously flipped one, but also the wrong way around, so I could also flip it later. And here you can see the result. I do think it already looks pretty good and not at all like a helmet. It's probably because my wefts are a lot thinner nowadays, so I'm able to glue them very close to each other, without being too much. A last trim of her bangs and her hair was done. I decided to left it long and beautiful like the main Asian dragons often have. Moreover, I just loved the result too much to cut it. To hide the bead on her tail, I took a leftover weft and wrapped it around itself, to be able to glue that on the tip of the tail. It still looked messy, so I wrapped the golden thread around it afterwards to hide the glue a little. Now we get to the part I was very excited about. Yes, I was excited about the outfit. Me! <laughs> Why that, you ask? Because I had some fancy stuff from Matisa that I really wanted to try out. 
Let me first start with this big box of fabric paint. There are a whole lot of different colors inside, even some special ones like metallic or neon colors. For my plants I took some of the more fiery colors like yellow, red and a neon orange. You can see all the different options as well as a little how to use menu on the package. So nearly no chance for me to mess up. Just painting something on the fabric I prepared would have been too boring. I wanted to test the colors as best as I could. So I chose black fabric and tried to paint a gradient without a first white layer. I was very curious how they would build up, so I took a sponge to dab a nice gradient on the fabric. It wasn't working that great, so after that dried I put another layer on top with a brush and that was way better. It looked just like flames, what I really liked, but just some fire was not enough. I also wanted to incorporate some of the gold effect paint and drew a fancy pattern on top. I have to say, I already liked that result a lot. Also the fact that you can layer the paint so easily was such a nice surprise. I would definitely use them more often for my doll outfits from now on. When the paint was completely dry I removed the tape and ironed everything to secure the colors. I was so impressed by the result, even though it's not a masterpiece. <laughs> but for my first try it looked really good in my opinion and it added so much more to the simple black fabric. But that was not the end of my outfit experiment journey. Arteza also sent me these 3D fabric paints. I always wanted to try 3D paint for doll clothes, so I was extremely excited. Like always, the box has a printed on color chart and a short description on how to use the paints. That's something I really like about Arteza boxes, because that way you can't lose your description. <laughs> The paints come with various different tips for fancy ways to paint on fabrics. But for this project I will only use the standard tip and of course the color gold. But look how much gorgeous options we have available here for future customs. Metallic colors, neon colors, even glitter. I have so many ideas. <laughs> but back to our project now. I painted a little border around our fancy painting for a little extra beauty and to hide the imperfections a little. <laughs> like I said, I still have to learn how to use this the perfect way, but even a newbie like me can get really beautiful results in my opinion. Since I had so much fun with the 3D paint, I decided last minute to add a little more. I always wanted to try craft foam to make armor and this seemed to be the perfect chance to do so. So I cut some pieces of foam and tried to bend them with heat like I saw many other artists do that. The arm pieces also got a little ribbon loop to insert her arms later. And then I could decorate them with the 3D paint again. I also got the idea to try this paint as glue by putting one of these half beads on top. Look how professional that looks! I was so excited and really had a lot of fun with that. I will definitely create more armor in the future. To finish up her outfit, I connected the fabric pieces with a golden chain and a jewelry closure piece. And with that, we were finally done! She took quite a while to complete, but I think it was totally worth it, since I learned a whole lot and was able to try some new things as well. A huge thank you again to Arteza for sending me the beautiful products, with which I had so much fun. All of you who watched my videos on a regular basis were probably able to notice that I found myself using as much of their products as possible. <laughs> and that's just because I like this brand so much. I'm always truly excited to work with Arteza and I feel so happy to share this with you guys. And look at this beautiful doll, I'm really happy with her outcome. And I even printed her a little katana, like last minute. <laughs> This project inspired me to add more and more, so that may be one reason why she took so long. I decided to name her Hikari, which means light, since she's golden and shiny and of course she has a story. Hikari was born and raised in captivity. Like all dragons, she was treated like a pet for the emperor meant to bring luck and good fortune for the kingdom. She never saw herself in this role, but had no chance to escape her fate. Until one day, 
the neighbor kingdom declared war. Everyone said they were safe in the palace, the guards would protect the emperor and his dragons, but one night, two assassins made their way in. Deep in the night, they killed the guards and all of the dragons, except for one. Without any more thinking, Hikari took the sword of one of the dead guards and fought for her life. With success. She was able to eliminate the assassins and saved her life as well as the emperor's life. That night, she rose to become a soldier and with her help, the kingdom was able to end war, bringing back peace and safety for the country. The emperor decided to gift her freedom and pass the law that no dragon will ever be held in captivity again. But instead of leaving him, Hikari stayed with the emperor to protect him as his personal guard. That was a little story. I hope you liked it as well as the doll itself. I had so much fun making her and I'm happy to be back now. If you check out my description box, there will be all the links for the Arteza products I use as well as a little coupon code for you to get 10% off. These links are affiliate links, so if you order through them, I'll get a little bit of that too at no extra costs for you. So you can shop some great art supplies cheaper than usual with the coupon and support me without even noticing it. I really think this is a great deal with everybody involved profiting. So let the shopping begin! I really thank all of you for your great support and wish you a wonderful day my little Linkses. See you soon! Tschüss!